Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and this is the IO Sonio. So if you're not familiar with this brand, IO, they are a new brand. They rolled out into the scene earlier this year with the Volare IM, and it was a $600 IM, and I know 600 bucks does not sound like a cheap IM, but for the driver configuration that they were packing with the Volare and the kind of incredible unboxing experience, it seems like IO is a brand that is trying to give you a lot of perceived value for a kind of mid-range price. And here with the Sonyo, they're giving you a lot that is the same, if not exactly very close to the Volare for an even lower price at 400 bucks. And again, I know 400 bucks is not super cheap, but given what this thing is kind of positioning itself as, it does have some promise. Now for the past few weeks I've been living with and listening to the IO Sonio, and I'm ready to let you know what I think about this thing exactly. Now, I mentioned the price is 400 bucks. Uh, the driver configuration is also a little bit different versus the Volare. This, instead of being a tribrid, is a hybrid. So it's got two balanced armatures, sorry, two dynamic drivers, four balanced armatures for that $400 price range. And a lot of the other stuff that you're gonna see is very, very similar to the Volare. But importantly, the name Sonio, it's kind of got a lot of promise to it, right? Though it's the Italian word for dream. Is this the dream I am for 400 bucks? Well, let's get into it. And before we do a quick shout out to Shenzhen Audio for sending this I am for review. If you want to check out the Sonyo, anything else they've got, I've got them linked in the description down below. And that, with that out of the way, let's dive to the table and let's talk about the physical form factor, what you get inside the packaging. Uh, and then we'll get into talking about the sound and I'll give this thing in the end a score. So. Here's what you get. Um, here's the packaging. Not quite as fancy as the Volare packaging, but I will be honest, this is still very nice packaging for the price range. Uh, and what you get inside of that is what you see here on the table. So you get a carry case, which is quite robust. This is basically like a watch carry case. Um, that is, you know, it's certainly pretty handsome. You, you, you can't accuse them of cutting corners in terms of cost. This thing feels fantastic, but I will say this thing is quite large and, and frankly much larger than anything I would personally use. But if you're looking for something to put on a table or on a shelf or something like that, and you want it to be presentable, well, you could certainly do that with this. Now, apart from that, you get ear tips, which, you know, you're used to getting ear tips, right? But are you used to getting this many freaking ear tips? Look at this. They've got literally like five different styles of ear tips and they've even got them labeled in these individual boxes, which I think is kind of cool. Look, I'm a big ear tip guy. When I get a new pair of IMs, if I like that IM a lot, I like to spend a lot of time customizing the ear tips and finding what gives me the exact perfect fit and also balance with the sound. And here's what I'll say about that real quickly, is that that's the thing that I, my opinion is, you gotta kind of test that stuff for yourself. And it's nice that the IO Sonyo is coming with a lot of ear tips for you to do that kind of testing for yourself. Here they've got kind of a standard ear tip. What's number two? I think number two is like a, a, a wide bore shorty ear tip. Number three, I think is a wide bore long. Oh no, that's not, there's a wide bore long tip in here. There's a foam tip in here. There's basically every type of tip that you could imagine needing to try um, all included in the box. And I think that's nice. And it's included in these little carry cases, which um, if you're like me, and again, you like to roll tips on your new IMs, it's nice to have everything packaged up tidy like this. I dig that a lot. But apart from that, you also get the IM on a cable, of course. And here's what I'll say. This cable is actually a pretty nice cable, but it's not quite as nice as the cable that came on the Volare. Um, it is still, I believe, hold on. Yeah, it is still their swappable termination. So if you want to unscrew this, pull off this 3.5, put on a, a, a standard 4.4 mil termination. You can make this a balanced cable if you'd like, but I am personally a 3.5 boy. So we keep it as is, but the rest of it, you can see it's just nicely behaved. It's black, it's glossy. I dig it. It's got small hardware, which I like. In fact, I really like the custom hardware that IO is putting on their cables. It's just, it's got enough of, you know, a subtle branding that is, it, they, they're, they're just doing it right, okay? Uh, you've got a chin cinch up here, and it does stay in place for the most part. It's not like a super stiff chin cinch, but that's good enough that it's going to stay in place. Uh, and then you've got your preformed ear hooks up here. And I always like it when they've got kind of like this matte finish to the ear hook. It just looks a little bit cleaner and tidier to me than like the glossy ear, the ear hooks that you see more commonly. Uh, and then the other thing that I like is their small uh, little two-pin connectors up here. And it is a standard two-pin connector. The 
connection on the IM side is slightly recessed, uh, but only slightly. And that just means that this is going to be compatible with pretty much any two pin cable that you've got out there. But like I mentioned, the one that it comes with is pretty nice. So frankly, I don't see any need to swap the cable on this. Um, here, we'll give it the old rodeo wrap so you can take a look. It is maybe a little bit on the thick side. So if you are allergic to a thicker cable, you might want something a little thinner. But personally, I think this is a pretty good match for the IM. And there you go. There's the roadie wrap, which is quite nice. Uh, but that will lead us into talking about the earpieces themselves. And um, well, here's where there's a lot of similarities with the Volare. In fact, I'm going to pull the Volare over here into view. And can you tell these two IMs apart visually? Obviously, not really. Uh, very much a similar shape, if not exactly the same shape. Uh, and even the design, the pattern on the outside is clearly thematically very similar. Uh, you've got more of a zoomed out view of this kind of sinewy design, whereas on the original Velari, it seems a little bit more punched in and zoomed in. And But apart from that, like this is, this is basically the same shell, which means um, I'm going to have kind of the same things to say about this as I did with the Volari, which is to say the shape here, let me punch in on that just so you can take a look at it. The nozzle is a little bit on the long side, which maybe doesn't totally come across here. It's just that this volume right here is actually fairly thick. And I would say that the overall size of this IM is kind of a medium large. Now I'll show you what it looks like in my ear in a bit, but just suffice to say that it is, you know, a little bit of a chonky boy, but not not overly chunky. It's not something like a, a, a Thea Audio Monarch or anything like that. But you know what? Let's just uh, let's show you my ear and let's put this in the ear. Um, the the main issue that I have with the fit, to be honest, is just that like even though it does have that semi custom molded shape, um, which means that you know it fits stability is actually pretty good. It just it it feels kind of like wedge shaped. So it almost feels like my ear is gonna like squeeze it out, like pop it like a pimple sort of. Uh, that was disgusting, but I don't, does that make any sense? Like it doesn't really feel super locked into my ear. It feels a little bit, again, kind of wedge shaped and it's in my ear, which is sort of the cavity of that wedge, which just feels like there, it's, there's more pressure at the, the end of it where my ear canal is and less pressure on the outside, which maybe is good for comfort, I guess. Um, but it just means that it doesn't feel super, super secure. And it also doesn't fit, you know, super doesn't really go behind tuck in behind the little anti tragus there so i don't know generally i would say that the fit is 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 solid uh it just fits a little bit larger and a little bit less secure because of that um and that that's that's about it if you've worn something like the truth ear nova this to me reminds me a lot of wearing the truth ear nova so if you're familiar with the nova fit and you like that fit you'll probably like the fit on this um, and if you've tried the IO Volare fit, well, this is exactly the same fit as that. So there you go. But, uh, nonetheless, that will do it for my thoughts here on the physical form factor. I think, let me just check my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm not missing anything. So that's going to let us talk about the sound. Let's talk about the sound signature here on the IO Sonio. And as we've been doing, let's pull up the frequency response of the Sonio. Uh, this is up on squig.link if you want to check it out for yourself. I've got it linked in the description down below. Head over to squig link, type in Sonio, which is spelled like this. And this is a frequency response that you should get. And well, this is a very Harman compliant frequency response. So if you're familiar with the Harman target, you like the Harman target, you're looking for something that's very Harman, the Sonio is definitely very Harman. And honestly, this is pretty similar to what we got with the Volari. In fact, let me pull up the Volari frequency response on top of this real quickly. And you can see that it's not that far different, but that the Sonio is actually more compliant with the Volari, or sorry, the Sonio is more compliant with the Harman target than the more expensive Volari. The main differences that you're going to notice is that, oh, what am I doing with a mouse cursor? We got fingers, bro. We got finger technology. Uh, there's a little bit more extra base on the Volare and also a little bit more upper treble here. Uh, and that does come across in the sound, but suffice to say they are both frankly pretty similar in the way that they sound. Um, just if you're used to the Harman target, what to expect, it's got a decent bit of bass boost to it. It's not like an overly bassy, warm, thick type of bass boost though. It's mostly kind of a sub bass bass boost. And then it's a little bit thin here in the mid range with fairly forward, um, vocal presentation. And what's interesting is that here with the Sonio, you even get the, the, the treble roll off that is basically exactly in line with the Harman target. Um, which just means that it's, this is not going to be a bright, splashy sounding IM, which could be good 
depending on what you're looking for. Now, with that said, let me pull this thing into view and let's talk about kind of my listening impressions of the Sonyo and maybe versus the, the, the Velari just specifically uh, right up front. I would say that that comparison, this sounding frequency response wise, very similar to the Velari to my ear is also true. I would say that the Velari does sound a little bit warmer, a little bit fuller, and the air up top does give the Velari, I would say a little bit better presentation of things like hi-hats and cymbals, right? Those drum, you know, those, those high frequency percussion instruments, at least to my ear, tend to work better when you've got more of that treble extension. Uh, and this one just rolling off a little bit, doesn't have quite the shimmer, doesn't have quite the metallicness to it. In fact, I would just kind of overall say that the Sonyo here, overall just sounds a little bit dry. And part of that is from that upper treble roll off, right? The, those hi hats and cymbals that can sound metallic-y in a good way on the Velare just come across a little bit plasticky here on the Sonyo. Um, but that's not the only place where this thing sounds dry. I would say in the bass region, it also sounds a little bit dry. Again, I would say that this sounds a little bit fuller in the bass versus something like the Truth Ear Nova. But if you've heard the Truth Ear Nova, there's a lot in, in, in common with the Sonyo. In fact, listening to them head to head, this versus the Nova versus the Velari, they're all kind of similar, but this sounds very, very similar to the Nova and how many fewer varies for the Velari. Sorry, I got a little tripped up there. Anyway, that is to say, um, it's just a little bit dry sounding, a little bit clinical, a little bit more mid rangey versus the Velari, which generally is where I tend to like my sound signatures. I like it to be a little bit more mid rangey, but that dryness does kind of limit my, my excitement for this, to be honest. Um, in terms of like technical performance, imaging and stuff, I would say it actually comes across a little bit congested. Um, I, I don't know if that's from the treble roll off, although also to be honest, the Velare is not a particularly stagey, uh, open sounding I am. Uh, and I would say that's even less true here for the Sonyo. It's just kind of a little bit narrow sounding and it's got, you know, good definition or decent definition between stuff. It's certainly a pleasant sound. Um, I will say that the bass hits a little bit harder on this than the Nova or the Nova can sound a little bit limp. This thing I think does a better job at being more consistent, but for the most part, this sounds a lot in common with the Nova, which you can get for 150 bucks. And even the Nova, to be honest, I'm not super excited about the sound on the Nova. So this is a decent sounding I am, but to be honest, I don't know. It's just like not obviously better to me than, I don't know, like a $20 seven Hertz uh, zero. So uh, there you go. I don't know. I, that's about as much as I can say about this I am. Um, is it the dream? Uh, not for me. It's fine. It's a fine I am. Um, if you're looking for something that's Harman compliant and you like the look, you like the aesthetic of this I am, 400 bucks is not a crazy amount to spend, but you could also spend that money on something like the Moondrop Cross Critical Dusk, which also came out earlier this year. It's actually a little bit cheaper. And in head-to-head -head comparisons with it, I found the Dusk was just like miles ahead for my preferences, at least. In terms of like the technical, like if... I don't know. I have a hard time believing anyone would like this more than the Dusk, but if you want to check it out, I do have it linked in the description down below. Did I give this thing a score? I've already forgotten. This thing's three stars out of five. If you want to check it out, I've got it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers. Joined with the force of reviews, we now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools. Uh, hey, this review is super. And so are you. Grab your headphones, sniff a graph, and share your thoughts in this pursuit. Better get with the future.